Blog Talk Radio. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Losing Your Parents International Radio Show. My name is Lisa A. Snyder. I'm broadcasting live from Portland, Oregon. Um, a little bit about me, I've lost both my parents to cancer when I was 22 and 27. Uh, I work to inspire others on my blog, losingyourparents.org, and journey through my own grief and healing process using creativity and self-expression. My intention is always to connect those of us who have lost our mothers, our fathers, or both of our parents at any age through the arts, life experiments, looking inward and turning pain into something positive. So I'm here to talk about stuff that's really hard. Um, and ways that we can all move forward in our lives and how we can all get back to a happier place. Um, if you'd like to try to call in live today from 1 to 1.30 p.m. Pacific time, you can call the uh, radio line here, one six one nine two. Uh, sorry, <laughs> one six one nine nine two four zero seven two three. You can also experiment by calling in on Skype, I just got um, directions here. You have to make sure you're logged into your Skype account. You can then log into your Blog Talk Radio account and go to the episode page of uh, blogtalkradio.com slash losing your parents and look for episode eight. And um, you apparently there should be a logo that says click to talk. And then when you see the pop-up window, click to talk, uh, logo again, you can automatically launch your Skype call, click call on the Skype application to complete the call for the show. So um, if anybody out there wants to experiment with calling in via Skype, um, just go to the blogtalkradio.com slash losing your parents, click on the episode you'd like to try, um, which is episode eight, love, rejection, and Thanksgiving. So we're going to be talking about Thanksgiving today. Uh, just giving you, I want to give you a little bit of update on my life on this side before we dive in there. So um, last week, I had every intention of being here. And it's interesting because when I started the show, I was like, oh, you know, some of them I, I know I'm going to want to record, some of them I'm going to want to do live. So if I want to be consistent, you know, I want to be there out there in the world like every day, at, like one o'clock in the afternoon uh, Pacific time on Wednesdays. And I thought that would be good because I'm here working in my office and that might be good. But last week we had special guests. Uh, my my fiance Catherine's mom came to town uh, from Delaware. It was her birthday. And we ended up going to a volcano. Mount St. Helen is about a hundred ish miles north of us in Washington. It, uh, anybody who doesn't know about Mount St. Helens, it actually uh, erupted back in 1980. And it was a really big deal. It was very destructive and a really tough time uh, for folks and animals and life, basically, around that time. And so it is dormant now. It could explode, but um, hopefully the worst is, is over. <laughs> and so it was really cool to like get op- up close and personal. I didn't I didn't know what the day was going to bring. I didn't know how long things were going to take. And once we got up there, there was definitely no phone service nor internet service because um, I can connect to the show through my phone and um, and it just wasn't it wasn't in the car. So I felt sad that I missed you, um, but I know that you'll y'all understand because it's life. So a little update on my pup Ziggy. Um, things are getting better. We've had him for over three weeks now. I just took him to the dog park today for the first time, and um, he was very happy. And we're all trying to, to find our way. He still doesn't get along with the cat. Maybe that, you know, he might never get along with the cat. But um, we're doing the best we can as, as new puppy parents. I uh, signed him up for, and all of us actually, up for um for puppy classes, and um, so that's going to be starting in December, and we're excited to move on. I am noticing that, you know, it's really healing to have an animal. Um, I could probably talk about that in a whole other show, but it's really healing to have an animal that just, like, loves you, and especially one that you've rescued. You rescued him from the Oregon Humane Society, and, you know, it's funny because I'm an adult orphan, and so is he. <laughs> and there's some camaraderie there, and there's some connection there. And there's some, this dog is so loving, and he's so adorable. I love him so much. 
Um, so just an FYI, if you want to get in touch, if you're feeling a little shy or you're just not, you know, maybe one o'clock isn't your time because you're working, uh, but you're listening to the archive of these shows, um, you can write me anytime. Uh, all of the contact information and ways to get in touch are on my website, losingyourparents.org slash contact. Um, and if you feel, or if you're feeling brave and just want to leave an anonymous message, that's actually really helpful for a lot of other people because I know a lot of us out there have lost at least one parent, if not both. And just hearing someone sharing their, a little bit of like what they're going through is really helpful. And so, you know, if you're thinking about writing me, also consider um, leaving a message uh, on the voice there. And so that information is on losingyourparents.org slash contact. You can, you can write me, you can call. I'm trying to be super available for you so we can all get through the holidays together. Um, so let's talk about Thanksgiving. Um, the topic today is Thanksgiving. I just saw someone on my friend Naz. Hope I can just call you Naz. Um, He's in India, and he always listens every week, which is so awesome. Hi. And so the topic today is, is love, rejection, and Thanksgiving. Um, so, and also preparing for Thanksgiving. Well, last week, or two weeks ago, I talked about preparing for Thanksgiving and some alternatives to um, dealing with it. And we had a caller who had left a message who was asking about how do you deal with the holidays um, and special specifically Thanksgiving because his mother died on Thanksgiving and he had been invited to um, his brothers and his sisters. He didn't know what to do. And so I want to sort of get back to the root here, which is you. You are your root system. You're your own best friend. And when you're making decisions about things like Thanksgiving and what to do, you have to get back to what is going to be best for you. You might have a family and a fit of those those people in your family, um, like your 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 family, like your children, or you know the people that are living with you and living life every day. Um, so you may need to consider those those people when making decisions. But ultimately, um, you have to come back inside yourself and make some decisions around how do you want to feel. And so I always opt for I'd like to feel good <laughs> if that's possible. I would really like to feel good, um, what do I need to do in order to feel good? And and when I'm not feeling good, what can I do for myself to feel better? Um, so this year, I'm going, I was invited to several, I feel very thankful, <laughs> several dinners, and Catherine and I have decided that we're going to go hang with our friends, Sarah and Karen, and uh, some of their friends, and some people are meeting um, through them. And just sort of really relaxing, laid back Thanksgiving when there's kind of no BS, and there's no drama, and it's just about enjoying each other and like watching football and relaxing and, you know, maybe having a drink and eating some good food. We're bringing some of our, it's kind of like a potluck, so um, it's, there's not a lot of pressure on, you know, the, the host to like cook everything and do all the work, et cetera. So, um, so that's what we decided to do. And, I'm actually, at this point, I've done so much work on myself, I'm not super triggered anymore by Thanksgiving, but you might be. Um, maybe something happened on Thanksgiving, like, you know, the guy that called in a couple of weeks ago and his mama died on Thanksgiving, you know. Maybe Thanksgiving is a special time for your family and now you don't know what to do because there's an empty chair. I actually wrote a blog post um, called Sometimes There'll Be an Empty Chair, and it's about when you've actually had one of your family members, your mom or your dad, like, chair, and then they're no longer there anymore. Maybe it was their chair. Maybe it was a chair that they sat at the table. And noticing that those chairs are empty um, is hard. It's not easy to, to notice these things. So in regards to love and rejection, um, I talk a lot about this because I think that this is a lot of our life experience, is trying to reach out and love other people, not getting back what we want or what we expect.
expect from people, feeling rejected, and the cycle continues. Um, some people have a lot of expectations without giving a lot. You have to give to get. I just want to say that when you expect other people to just give to you and give to you and give to you without you giving back, it's imbalanced. It is imbalanced. It doesn't feel good for you, and it doesn't feel good for the other people because they can feel you wanting. And the feeling of lack and the feeling of wanting is very empty, and it creates an empty energy. So if you're trying to connect with family members and you're expecting them to give you something, try taking that expect expectation down a couple notches. Um, Try to, what can you give yourself? You know, what do you want? Some peace? Some, some, some love for yourself? Um, I, I have a particular situation that I'm thinking about um, where somebody was very uh, expecting people to take care of them and expecting people and not treating them very kindly. And it's really sad to see that, to be witness to that. And that's an extreme case when, when you witness somebody um, or even yourself um, wanting so much and not really giving a lot. So you have to give to get. So what does giving mean? And um, giving a little piece of yourself. Maybe it's time to call a friend who you haven't talked to in a while or a family member that you actually want to know what, what's going on in their life. Um, I called a couple people in my family over the weekend, and um, I really just want to know how they were doing. I just want to know what's going on with them, um, how their life is. You can't expect anybody to care about your life if you're not caring about theirs. And I think that's like one of the lessons I've learned along, you know, my in my 20s is my dad first died. I was really sad because not a lot of people reached out. And I think people I thought would reach out didn't, and it was really disappointing. And so you're setting yourself up for disappointment if you're – you have to really try and release expectations. It's really hard to do. But if you – you have to let go of the outcome. You have to put energy into something and then release. You have to put energy into something and then release the outcome, at least what's going to happen after you've put in the energy, because you never know where that energy is going to come from. It may not be directly where you're putting it. That's the interesting thing about the universe is that when you put out energy, you can put it into something and kind of hope that something else comes back to you from that direct place, but you have to let go so that you can actually receive what you're supposed to receive, and a lot of times, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but a lot of times, it's somewhere you didn't expect at all. You put energy into something, you thought an outcome was going to happen, and then a different outcome happened um, that was kind of similar, and it wasn't where you were expecting it, but it happened anyway, and you're like, hey, I'll take it. Um, I'm sure there's like a thousand things that like have happened to me where I put energy into something, and then something amazing happened, but it wasn't what I expected, and that happens a lot. So this Thanksgiving, when you're gearing up to feel with family, see family you haven't seen in a long time, feel feelings that are uncomfortable, try and make that day, be energized that day by putting energy into it. That's positive. Being thankful for what you do have. Don't focus on what you don't have because that actually creates a lack and a vacuum effect you have to focus on the things that you have, even if you're feeling sad. Be grateful for what you do have. You could be homeless. You could be, you know, you could have, you would lose your job. But maybe you have a job. Be thankful for that, even if the job sucks. <laughs> you know, you're paying for food on your table. Paying for the gap that it takes to get to where you're going. Uh, you're paying the electric bill for what you have. 
as you go into this day, try and release the outcome of anything. It'll be a really, and call it an experiment. Who knows what's going to happen? But if you release the outcome of what is going to happen, you'll be very surprised at what actually you allow to happen. Maybe there's a piece of healing that happens. Maybe you talk to somebody you wouldn't have talked to. Maybe you actually enjoy yourself. <laughs> Maybe the whole day goes by and you're like, wow, this is the first Thanksgiving I actually felt at peace. What would that be like? You know, what would it be like to actually be at peace when you have always felt uncomfortable? Uh, check the Twitter. Looks like Naz has been trying to call via Skype. But it's not working. I don't know. This is I have not used Skype with the uh, with the radio here, and so. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen any calls come in. Do you want to try again? I'm going to try calling in again, see what happens. Um, I haven't been looking at the screen. I've just been talking. <laughs> so um, try again, Naz, if you want to give me a call. And if you are feeling brave and want to talk, um, see 619-924-0723 um, is the phone number to call in. And again, if you're listening to the archive later after the show, um, you can you can contact me anytime using your parents.org slash contact. Um, so let's talk about the extremes, a little bit of extremes of love and rejection and wanting it. Um, I recently witnessed some exchanges. Oh, there you are. Let's Let's do an experiment. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on Naz. Um hold on a second, let's see. Naz, are you there? Yeah, hi, this is Naz here. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. We made it work. Nice job. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So you're calling from India? Yeah, I'm calling from India. That's so cool. Thanks for thanks thanks for being along on this journey with me and, and for following and for you know being No you know, absolutely also thank you. Because... Also also <laughs> thank you for being with us in this difficult phase of life of ours actually. It's you know it's been really helpful actually, really helpful. I've been following it I'm religiously following it actually. I'm so happy that, you know, that that you know, we're here and I, and that you're listening. Um I know that you don't have Thanksgiving in India, but do you have anything yeah. that's similar that's like like a celebration of India or any kind of other holiday that you can identify with when we're talking no, about actually, Thanksgiving? Actually, there's no celebration, something like that, but it's like Thanksgiving every day, actually. You should be appreciating whatever you have, and you know, Thanksgiving like every day in India, actually, you should. Uh, when, when it comes down with God, so like, you're um, very... Uh, when you see things in around and it seems like you're very we are very blessed actually to have things uh, when I look around people who are not who are not even getting what they what I have actually right now. So so being thankful every day, you, you yeah, try actually. to practice that, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So today, what are you thankful for today? Yeah, like today I thank when I see some people with poor health. So I see I mean I I've lost my father in, because of cancer and poor, like, I think that whatever in life I think so money, materialistic things don't give much importance right now whatever matters to me is living world, have a peaceful life and God is giving me my, I have my mother with me so I have means I have happy, uh, just trying to search for happiness and have a good health, that's it uh, What time is it there today? Oh, here it's uh, 3 o'clock nearly 3 a.m. 3 a.m.? Yeah. Wow, you like to stay up late. <laughs> <laughs> I just wait for this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's awesome. You also work for yourself, right? Yeah, exactly. What do you do? What do you do for I, work? No, right now I've uh, I've left my job and I'm doing my business. Afterwards, I'll be going back to my uh, job, actually. I'm into talent acquisition. I was working as a professional recruitment site, IT recruitment. 
Okay. That's cool. Well, I feel really special that you're, you know, listening to, to the show live. And um, and I definitely think of you. I'm like, oh, Naz is going to be listening today. That's so awesome. It really gets me pumped to to do this, you know. Like, I mean, and everybody yeah. like listening from all over the world. And that's so cool. Mm-hmm. So do you want to tell just a little bit, do you want to tell everybody a little bit about um, who you lost and when? Like, I, I lost my dad in the 5th of July in 2014. Uh, I was uh, I was working in my another city, actually. I was staying early, uh, away from my family for the past four and a half years. And suddenly, uh, I was about to leave India, actually, going abroad, actually, for my work. Then I, I, came, I, res- I came here, I resigned there, and I was going... Just about a week before we came to know that my father was diagnosed with cancer, liver cancer, and he was at fourth stage. And then I had to take him to the best doctor of Asia, and I tried my very best. And the thing, very first day, I was told that he was not going to survive more than three months or four months. We did our best. I did my best traveling and did my best work and do my for my father, and I lost him. It's uh, it's been a big setback, uh, not only for my. I lost my dad, I lost in my career point of view, my dad also. I'm the only son, my sister is not in India, she stays in England. So, uh, I have to take care of everything, it's been a big traumatic, uh, going through the cancer hospitals and all, it's been a big, uh, has, has certainly changed something of my mind. I've gone through some trauma, if I won't, yeah, it's not a mistake to say that also. It's been tough, I've seen kind of a lot of patients and all, I've seen my father's death quite closely. So, as, um, it's every day, somewhere on the line, uh, I subconsciously I think tomorrow may be a bad day for me. It can be a bad day for me because suddenly my life has changed when my father, suddenly he was, everything was fine. And just one day we went for a checkup and then all these checkups were done and we came to know that he's not going to survive. In moments, a few months, I lost my dad. Our life has changed. Uh, it's been very down, but uh, still thanks for listening all these uh, to your uh, regular blogging and all I've come up and trying to fight out life so, so you lost him in the summertime or I guess I don't know if it's the summertime it's in the July right in summertime. July right July. so it's still really fresh you know it's only been four months four, see, four and a half four, months four months you know so yeah. it's still really raw right now do you know anybody yeah. else your age who has lost a dad Right now, uh, in my age, uh, I don't know anyone who's lost. You're young That's like me, right? You're in your like 30s? Yeah, I'm, th- I'm into 30s actually. Okay, yeah. I'm 33. Yeah. So I don't know. It's so interesting to, you know, to hear about, you know, your perspective from a totally different country, you know, um, a different way of life and... I kind of get the sense that folks in India are very focused on being thankful and in general um, and just trying to find their way to peace, which is definitely in alignment with what I'm trying to do. Um, yeah. And I'm so sorry to, to, you know, to know that this loss has been tough it's been for really you helpful. and, it's been really you helpful. know, very, very tough. How have you, have you, I know that life is really different. Have you noticed the difference inside yourself between... Yes, I've noticed my difference, yes. I've analyzed it quite deeply, actually. And every day I'm changing a bit. Sometimes negative, sometimes positive. But what I've changed, I've seen the change. I've tried to see, I've tried to make peace with myself. That's the first thing I've done. I've tried to conquer the fear in myself that, you know, I was not, I was never at peace with myself. And I used to think that, uh, like, I'm the only one who's suffering. When I read your blogs and I have heard you also, and I'm going through a lot of magazines also and uh, regular, I'm reading a lot. So it has seen me that you know I'm not the only one who's suffering, and and still uh, what I think, what I, what I see, the kind of you know life has to be, life will be carried on, and what we can do more is that you know we can uh, live for up the more, the more happier we are, the more my my father will be happy there upstairs. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, you know, when I wrote the blog, when I first wrote the blog in 2011, I definitely felt alone, you know, and I was like, I, I, I tried to find resources for young people with lost parents, and I, I really had a hard time. There was not a lot of stuff out there, and so I just really wanted to meet other people who had lost parents but also talk about the things I was going through. So, you know, you're definitely not alone. Um, there's a lot of people out there, and the, the thing is, is that, Talking about grief is really hard for people. Um, yeah. Really, it's not an easy topic to discuss with um, anybody, really, unless you feel super safe doing so. And so I get a lot of emails. Um, and I know in the beginning I was like, oh, I'm going like, to make a forum and everyone can talk to each other. But I noticed that like people kind of were shy about it because it is a very, very soft subject. And I really appreciate yeah. your bravery and being able to, you know, to come on to the show and to talk about it and also to tweet me and to write me and like, you know, you're really like a grief warrior. Um, yeah, actually, because I've tried a lot t- talking to a few people, but I've not found people who are, you know, they were not, you know, they were not able to connect with me, what I was talking, what I was going through. So somewhere down the line, I just connected with whatever, because you have also gone through this. And and I just found that peace there, and I thought that you were able to understand what I was trying to say, and you were understanding what exactly I'm going through right now. So and people don't understand like losing of uh, see losing of losing parents is a pain actually, but losing of your parent in that pain of cancer it's it's really I can't describe those things in words. Sometimes words cannot be described. Uh, what I've seen through the, the problem. So uh, I was I was not at peace with myself and I had no I had the motive for living was disappearing. It was, there was no motive to live. I was I used to think that what's the use of living when I have, when everyone has to die? You, you, have, you don't know what it means. There's no need to rise up and stand and again fight because life was I I knew life was a I was fighting only. But now it never had any motive. But slowly by slowly I've got up. I've entered this zone of life again. Maybe uh, you. I think you've you played a big part in that, and I should and thank you for that also. But still, uh, it's going up and down also. Sometimes positive, sometimes negative. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. I'm just so honored and I feel very blessed to to be with you on this journey and to hear those things that you're saying to me. Um, that I that I have helped on some level and that you can identify with what. I have gone through. I've definitely come a long way. It's been um, it's been ten years since my dad died, and five years since my mom died. And so I've done a lot of work on myself. And one of my intentions is to help those who um, who also want to do work on themselves and to move forward. You know, you're not always going to be happy, but you can actually feel joy again and feel peace in places you didn't. And that's one of my intentions. And so. Um, I got about a minute, 30 seconds left here. So, Naz, if you want to, um, I'm just so thankful for your phone call. We can talk on, on Twitter. Sure. And uh, so I'm going to sign off here and just, you know, give everybody information about how to connect and, and stay connected. Um, so sure, so sure. I'm going to hang up and we'll, we'll talk on Twitter, okay? Thank you for it's calling. Nice talking to you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Well, that was so nice. Oh my God. Thank you so much. Um, all right. So I'm really interested if you feel like sharing to write me on the website uh, about your Thanksgiving. I want to hear what are your traditions? What traditions are you trying to let go of? What are you trying to change? What kind of challenges you're having with this Thanksgiving? Um, what are you having a hard time with? What uh, how has Thanksgiving been for you in the past, and what is it like now? I realize now um, that Thanksgiving is, you know, an American holiday, um, but maybe if you're somewhere else in the world, you can identify with some kind of holiday. Um, if you want to talk about the holidays that are coming up, I'm, I'm really, I want to hear what you have to say. So please write me, leave me a message. All information is on losingyourparents.org slash contact. Um, so... I just want to thank everybody for listening um, live and also on the arc. Lisa A. Snyder, you've been listening to Losing Your Parents International Radio. And remember, you got to feel the heels. Lots of love. Signing off.